as you know, we've been talking about uh, Operation Christmas Child. It's coming up, uh, what is it, November 18th? That's the day that they have to be in. Where are you, Chris? It's the 18th that they have to have the gifts in for Operation Christmas Child. It's in the bulletin. Yes. What? We have to have them here by the 18th. The 18th. Yeah. yeah, and then we will take them, take our collection over to the central area and drop them off there. Now, we have been doing Operation Christmas Child for a number of years. Um, this is a, a, an awesome thing that we get to do. You say, oh, well, you know, we're giving cheap toys to kids in foreign lands. No. What we're doing is opening the door so that the gospel can be brought to these people. Okay, the, the, the package that we send is simply a means to an end. Yeah, we're, we're, we're touching them and, and hopefully we're blessing them, but we're looking to do more than just that. Now, what's really cool about this is they've, they've made some changes in the last few years so you can track your package and, and see where your package is going if you would like to do that. But today we've got something even better than that because Joan Rhoda, who is a a member of another church but comes in fellowships with us when her church can't meet, um, she actually got to go with some of the packages and deliver them to children in Uganda. <coughs> okay, so now today she's going to show us the other side. We see the collection and the giving. She's got to see the receiving. So, Joan, I'm going to turn it over to you and you come up. I'm going to move my my copious amount of stuff out of your way okay. <laughs> and that's for you okay great. you need the lights down uh no i think that's fine okay uh, hi <laughs> uh my name is joan Broda, and i am what's called the prayer mobilization coordinator uh, for our local operation christmas child team which is just a big mouthful of words for i encourage people to pray for Operation Christmas Child. And, you know, praise God, your church has very kindly signed up as a prayer partner. So um, you are prayer partners with Operation Christmas Child. And, you know, prayer changes things. Prayer greases the skids. Prayer <coughs> makes things happen. So, you know, I, well, I'll get to that. <laughs> First of all, I want to just thank you so very, very much <coughs> for um, packing the shoeboxes. And um, I wish everyone could go to a shoebox distribution in another country. I don't think it matters what country it is. I was able, I was privileged, really privileged, to go to Uganda this year, uh, which is called the Pearl of Africa. Um, and it is a beautiful country, desperately poor, um, gorgeous foliage, and tacky looking, looks like slum strip malls. That's the villages outside of the main city, Kampala. But um, I want to thank you for packing those boxes because they make such a difference to the people there. And what makes the difference to the people there, like Glenn was saying, is it's the message that they're giving. These, these boxes, short name for them is Go Boxes, and that just stands for Gospel Opportunity Boxes. And what it does is uh, gives the pastor the tools to reach out to his neighborhood. And, and those communities, those little communities, um, are, like I said, desperately poor. They're a mixture of Islam, witchcraft, tribal religion, nothing, and Christianity, Catholicism, um, regular evangelical, but not so much of that. And so these boxes are touching the lives of people who would never hear about the gospel, probably, or maybe not. So um, let's see here. How this kind of came about for me is that um, last November I was praying about whether to go to this other place that I go sometimes to help, not through Operation Christmas Child. And I really wasn't getting an answer. And so I was kind of praying. And then all of a sudden in November I had emergency back surgery. I thought, well, oh, I don't know if I can get on a plane to this other place in February. That's going to be too soon. And about that time, I love how God works. In the mail comes this invitation from, from Operation Christmas Child to go to Uganda. And I was kind of shocked because you used to have to apply, um, and then maybe you get to go. Only just a very few people each year get to go out of all the, the 
thousands of people that volunteer year round. <coughs> Anyway, so, so that kind of answers my question. And I like to say that I asked God if I should go to Russia, and he said, no, I'm sending you back surgery in Uganda instead. So <laughs> it was a good trade, actually. <laughs> so um, can you put up that first picture? Okay. Um, we flew into Kampala, people from all over the United States. There were three teams of us. I was the, the red team, so we had these red sunglasses that we wore. Most of the time I just wore them on my head, but um, that was our red team. And um, from all over the United States, people flew in. And we went to Uganda. We landed in Kampala, which is a huge city, about over a million people. Some, some of it very advanced, but there was just like this pall of smoke. And what I want to do kind of today is take you on a short journey so that as if you were there, you could see what it's like. Um, and uh, so there was this smoke smell, smoke and spices and something not so nice. And somebody who had been to those places um, described it as the third world smell. <coughs> And, um, but I had never experienced that before. So we got to the motel the next morning. We got up and we trained, and then we went to our first village. And this was, this was the village. Um, this church, that's a church, um, is called Anointing Church Ministry. And they have, we went to five outreaches and then a, a teaching session. Um, where they, they teach the kids the gospel. And these outreaches are where they're going to distribute the shoeboxes. So um, you get to, we pull that in our van, and there's this noise going on in the background. And the, the staff got out to make sure everything was safe and everything, and they got out, and all we could hear was, yeah, you know, and the kids are, and it was the noise was the kids. It was just like deafening from inside the van. They were so excited. And uh, the thing to remember is a lot of these kids have never received a gift. And they don't know that there's gifts coming. They, they have no idea that there's going to be shoeboxes with gifts. The shoeboxes are, by the time we get there, they're in huge cardboard cartons. You've probably seen the cartons. Um, and... Uh, so, but the kids don't know what's in them, and, and we're like, well, why would a bunch of kids come to a church? A lot of them are in church. Sometimes all of them are. There was one we went, there was 40, one church had 40 church kids who had invited 60 of their friends who didn't know the Lord. So, because that's the point, is right. to introduce, introduce them to Jesus. And um, if, if you'll notice, I just have to point this out. See the guy with the white beard? Yeah. Does he look like someone that might come around with Operation Christmas <laughs> Child? <laughs> he is from North Pole, Alaska. Oh. <laughs> 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 so anyway, um, we get there and the kids are so excited. And these are not regular church services. They're not on a Sunday. But they have some of the same elements. So we would go in and um, sometimes there would be chairs to sit in or we'd stand among them where there'd be wooden benches. This church and many like it um, had a dirt floor, some wooden benches, partial walls. And you see there on the right a huge pile of bricks. Well, this pastor, <coughs> I'll tell you about him, he, uh, he came out of Islam and decided he wanted to share the gospel with other people. So he started this church in this little village I think it's called Baala, and um, he's making the bricks, they, and that's what most of the churches do. They, you know, get the mud and whatever else, and they put them in a kiln and they bake them. And then, when they get enough money for a little cement, they put a row. Then they bake some more bricks, and when they get enough cement, they pour another row. So, at least one of the churches had been working on theirs for six years, oh, wow. and, yeah, and they hadn't given up. So that's what those bricks are for, and. Uh, you go in, and so, you know, it's very basic in there. Um, and it's just stuffed full of children and people, oh, adult people. And um, first they would pray. And I want to tell you, in John 4, it says the fields are white with the harvest. That is absolutely true. These boxes are reaching those white fields. 
and bringing the gospel to them. And their hearts are so open for it. The adults, the children, it is just amazing what it does. And uh, so we would go in and, and, and they would pray. I'm just going to take you through this one church because you don't have all day. <laughs> and um, the pastor would look to the children who are all in there. Their churches are built around their children because they know if they can reach the next generation for Christ, then everything will change in their communities and their countries. So the children are very central to the church. So the pastor says to the children, humble yourself and you see this or this. And then there's just like this woven mat of prayer. It's just their voices praying and praying and praying above you and they're so serious about it. All these little kids were. Um, would you try the next picture? One after that. There we go. That's an example of them praying. And then the next one too. So it, it was amazing, you know, how, how focused they were on that. Um, and so after the prayer, then we'd have worship. And it, again, it was just like, oh my goodness, the children are usually, at, even the poor churches at the front, they um, have maybe a keyboard or a guitar. They have the big um, African drums. And um, they are so, I mean, I love you guys' worship. And it, and it kind of reminds me of that a little bit. They're just like, even the kids are like, you know, they're just, they're really, oops, I almost knocked over the podium to one church. <laughs> they're, they're just so serious about worshiping God and thanking Him. And uh, so, after they did that, then it's time. Uh, the, the kids know that there's an event. They're all there for an event. So then we as the team would get up and go to the cartons and open them up. Oh, yeah, before that, more important, before that, before every distribution, they teach the greatest gift, which is the gospel. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, a, it's a really nice little book with pictures, makes it interesting for them. And most of those kids do not have books in their homes at all. So it's amazing to them that they get to keep this. And, and while we're passing out boxes, then we give them we give them the greatest gift on top of the box, and they know they're not supposed to open them, and they don't try, which is kind of amazing to me. <laughs> but they, they sit there, and they are looking through the book. They're very, very interested in it. So they hear the gospel. And they also, um, they, you've heard the Rush, or Rush, the African saying, I'm sure that God is good all the time, and then the other person responds all the time that God is good. But the kids add a thing to it, and they're so intense on it, they say, I'll try to do it with their accent. They say God is good all the time, and then they say, because that is his nature. Wow. Wow, now I see these little eyes. <laughs> So they're very excited about that. Anyway, so then it's time for them to open the boxes. And so we go up and we cut the boxes open. And luckily, they arranged the kids by age and by gender. Because um, at least in Africa or in Uganda where I was, most of the girls' hair is cropped so short. And you know, at a certain age, it's kind of hard to tell the difference. So we've got boys on one side and girls on the other. And then two to four, five to nine, ten to fourteen. So we know who to give the boxes to, because you guys always, you know, send boxes for a certain age group. Or gender. So we do that, and the kids are waiting, and then, then one person um, gets to come up and say, three, two, one, open, and it's just a blast of noise, and everybody's yelling, and they're, they're looking at their stuff, and they're so excited about everything. I think everybody should have a ball in their box, because played with those constantly afterwards. Wow. Um, doesn't matter what kind of ball, just a ball of some sort. So that's, that's the opening of it, and it's wonderful. And so we got to stay and play with them for a while, and then um, it was time for them to go home, so they did, uh, can you, oh yeah, she's doing three, two, one, thank you. <laughs> did you go to the next one? Oh. Okay, I'll get to that in a second. The, the kids leave. They put their boxes on their heads, just like you see, and they walk down the road like that. I don't know why they carry that, but the women 
carry big things like that, but the little kids carry their boxes like that too. So they all go down the road. And then it's time to bless the pastor. So I want to tell you a little, I, I told you that he came out of Islam. Um, he, his wife, his dad had three wives, so he had 24 brothers and sisters. Oh. Yeah, and none of them know the Lord yet, but we'll see what happens. <coughs> um, um, I'm sure it's like this in other countries, too, from what I've heard people say, but the fields are white for the harvest. Their hearts are so open. They want to hear the gospel. They, you could talk with them all day about it, and they're so doggone humble. And Pastor James was, was that way, and he's the very first one we went to, and it was like put a total lump in your throat because Samaritan's Purse, which is the mother company for um, mother organization for Operation Christmas Child, has a, ba a bag, a big bag full of Sunday school supplies. And these are things that we really take for granted, right? If we run out of pencils, we get some off the shelf or run to the store or whatever, we don't have that. So we said, um, the Nathan, the leader said, you know, Pastor James, we have a gift for you. And, and his wife or his staff were with him. And he did what they do there. He fell to his knees in the dirt in his Sunday best <laughs> and said, this is how we praise. This is how we think. And he wasn't. He wasn't worshiping us, for heaven's sake, but he was praising God and thanking us for, and, and all of you, you know, because you all contribute for these supplies that we had given him, and he was so touched, and, and then we prayed over him. It was, it was just representative of all the pastors and their staffs and their families and their children that I saw there. I didn't see anybody who wasn't grateful and humble. Go ahead. And that's just me talking to him. He's, but you can look at his face and see he's just such a dear person. Okay, and that's inside the church. Okay, next one. And, uh, that's the red team, so we had red noses that day. That's the only day we wore them. <laughs> um, so that's what the distribution is like when the shoeboxes go. One of the days we were there, we were privileged, because not every, not every team gets to do this, but we got to go to a teaching of the Greatest Journey Discipleship Program. And that is a 12-lesson program that teaches them from Genesis through after Christ died um, and gives them a chance to accept the Lord as their Savior and many, many, I think, at least more than half, I don't have the numbers in my head, do accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And many of them go on to do amazing things in their lives and the lives of their countries and communities. But, um, so we went to this, we went to this church and we sat down and went through the whole thing like we did for the distributions with the praying and the singing and it was tear jerking. <laughs> and then we got to this. And I was so impressed because Samaritan's Purse trains the people on that side, the Ugandan leadership team. They're amazingly trained to teach teachers how to teach the Bible. And so the, the leadership team was with us. We had one or two members with us. And then there were the teachers at the various churches that were teaching the greatest journey. So we squeezed into this really teeny. It, it was actually at this church, but we were having worship and games out on the lawn ahead of time. But then we went to this little itty bitty um, Sunday school room for this and, and squeezed in and I was just really horrified because in this particular one they had some benches but they had the you know the cheap white outdoor chairs and I sat in it and pushed on the arm and broke it. <laughs> I was like, Big American breaks their chairs. <laughs> like, ah. But nobody said anything and so we got to listen to them and the kids are so attentive. They're like me teacher, me teacher when they when they want to uh, answer questions. Um, somebody from their team, the Ugandan team, goes through while the teacher is teaching and, and shows bigger than this, picture, poster picture, so the kids know, can get a visual on what things look like and be able to answer questions. And um, they are so excited to answer questions. And, and in fact, at the one we went to, the first thing, they're learning Bible verses too, and the first thing, 
is the lady, uh, it was Claire from the leadership team who was teaching it, and she's Ugandan, and she said, so what is our verse today? This little boy must be like five, pops up and quotes John 3.16. Just no, that's not our verse. <laughs> so some other little boy pops up and says the right verse. But the point is, they'd all been actually memorizing the verses. Mm -hmm. So that was so cool. And they all are very aware of Bible precepts like sin because they said right along with her. They just exactly like this. They they did it with her. I think they all said it about three three times. One second. Okay. Sin is anything you do, anything you say, or anything you think that does not please God. And you've got a whole room full of kids saying this. So they're, they're aware of all the Bible precepts that, that they're being taught. And <coughs> you should go ahead and flip to the next one. Oh, that was the game we were playing, and there's Laura from the Seattle area. Oh, okay, I was telling you about the foliage. That is... See that huge thing that looks like a watermelon? It's a jackfruit hanging from a tree. It's uh -huh. like, you would not want to walk underneath that. <laughs> and I think there's very little fruit in it, but they do use it to eat. Um, okay, next one. Okay, and that's the one I was looking before. Those are the kids going home from one of the, and, and that's how the roads are. Is that how the roads were where you were on your vacation? No. No. no they, they were concrete, but that the foliage was just like that. Yeah, and some of them are like this. There was one that we went to that when we got there it was threatening to rain, and Nathan said, if it starts raining, you're on the bus and we're out of here, or we will not be leaving, because you can't get up and down the roads. They were hilly, they were, you know, slick dirt. And uh, so anyway, there's that. Um, Oh, okay. uh, oh, oh, no. Is there anything to rotate that? Oh, good. Okay, I'll tell you about that one in a second. Um, just as soon as I finish about the greatest journey. The, the question I love that's in here on every lesson, and that's in the greatest gift book, too, they ask, who are you going to share this story with? And the kids really do it. And I was sitting next to a little girl, and you could see kids writing, writing, writing. Some wrote parents, some wrote friends. I said, but a little girl, so who are you going to? And most of them can speak English. And she said, um, it's for my older sister. She's at home. So she was going to go home and share it with her older sister. And I, I think about that because I think how often we leave church or Sunday school, and who, we should be sharing it with somebody. Pretty much every time, yeah. you know, that's a wake-up call for me. <laughs> so, okay, almost the last thing. I've got to tell you about this girl. I don't know her name. I wish I did. I tried to get her name, but it was loud, and she had an accent, <laughs> so I didn't get it. Um, my old pastor said, well, I call her red glasses, but <laughs> my old pastor said, well, just look at her. Her name's Joy. You can tell. <laughs> So at this particular church that we went to, there was like, it, it actually had floor and walls and everything, mostly walls, and um, there was like 200 kids there. And so when we went in, they had lined up chairs across the back, the white, infamous white chairs, <laughs> and so they said, go ahead and sit down there. So I sat down and a lady came running down the hall and she, or the uh, aisle, and she said, no, no, we've put chairs up by the children so you can sit with the children. So I jumped up, and I'm, I'm going up the aisle, and I look up, and here's Joy, little red glasses. She's standing in front of her chair like this, and she's looking at me going, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yes, you know, score. So I, I went, and, and I sat down and put her on my lap, which was just like kind of a piece of heaven because my grandkids are kind of too big for laughs now. <laughs> but she was so sweet. And during the, so we went, you know, sat there during the whole build up to the shoebox distribution. And at one point she turned around and she took my glasses and she put them on herself and she went. <laughs> she just thought she was a cat's meow, you know, because I had to take them back because I need to be able to see. And um, so after we had gone up, past the shoe boxes, and <clears throat> I made my way back to her. I made my way past a couple of little ones that were sitting in the two to four year olds, and one of them's holding his box and he's kind of peeking under it. So I said, oh, can I help? Because that's what you do, is you help them open their boxes and they ask you what things are. In fact, sometimes you 
say, like uh, there was a game of fish, and I said, it's fish, you know, it, it's a card game. Do you play that here? Yes, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they understand, not, sometimes not so much. But um, I, made, I, I got to the little guy, and, and uh, I said, do you want me to help you? And I kind of picked up the corner he was picking up, and I was a little, little quack, quack, deaf, and I said, quack, 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 and he grinned, and quack, 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 back at me. Then there was a really little one sitting next to him, and he must have been just two, and he was like, frozen holding his box. There wasn't even any attempt to open it. So I said, do you want me to help? <laughs> but someone was going to take his box from him because many of them have never had a present of any kind. And so this is precious to them. And so, yes, the things that we put in a lot of times aren't expensive. They shouldn't be junk that falls apart because you see that and that's awful. And they shouldn't be so complicated that you need a screwdriver to put them together either. <laughs> but, um, but they're precious to them. Um, and you'll see when I talk about joy now, so I made my way back to her and she had opened her box and she was so excited to show me that she had a pair of flip flops. And I'm thinking, oh goodness, one of the team members said, we shouldn't even put those in, they're so cheap and they just, you know, they're, they're no good. Oh, they're so excited for the flip flops. <laughs> and she was wearing tights and a pair of real old stuff <coughs> kind of falling apart sandals. So she showed me her flip flops and she took them off and stuck them on over her tights with the toe thing and everything and wore them the whole time. She was so excited. So we went through her box and at some point, somebody turned on some praise music up front that was pretty lively. And um, so, they started dancing, and I am not kidding, they have moved. Little kids, Joy Sex kids, they were dancing. So I don't have moves, but I danced with them anyway. <laughs> it must have been pretty funny for them. They probably went home and talked about that. <clears throat> but we must have danced a half an hour, and it was just so sweet. And as I was looking at her and remembering her with the glasses, I, we're not supposed to give anything but the boxes to anybody because they don't want to foster a wrong relationship with people in another country. But <laughs> I went up to one of our leaders, I said, can I give her these glasses? <laughs> oh yeah, I think you probably could. So I came back to her and I said, I love you and these are for you. And she went, oh, and she dropped to her knees and said, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I just, man, I can't get over that, you know, and I hugged her to death, and oh, she was so sweet. So I put them on, or she put them on her, and I thought it was so cute and funny that they were upside down. I didn't realize, she probably didn't realize how they were supposed to go on her, so she wore them that way the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just, that was, if I had a moment, I have to have to choose, that would be when. That would be that one, probably, but there were so many one of the Samaritan's first staff that was with us said, so I haven't talked to you, what, what was your favorite moment? I just said, all of them? <laughs> you know? And I said, maybe that, but it was all of them. I mean, it was, I wish it could all go, but if not, I hope you understand how important it is what you're doing. When I joined, started serving with Operation Christmas Child, I thought, oh, this is a nice little ministry we give gifts to kids. No. <laughs> like Glenn said, no. It's, it, yes, it is nice. It's nice because they don't have school supplies. They don't have, and school supplies are important because it's the only way they can get themselves out of poverty. Um, but what's important is they're truly being given the hope. And you guys, every single one of you, the Pax Fox is a missionary. You know, in my mind, I don't know if that's the official definition, but in my mind, that's what you are because Matthew says to go and make disciples of all the nations. And with this, that's what you're doing. It's like the old saying, if I get this right, give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day, teach him to fish, and he'll always have something to eat. And that's what you're doing. You're teaching, you're, you're giving them this hope of the gospel, and they're becoming missionaries in their own country to their, to their families and their communities and and their friends and stuff. So you're, it's like you're discipling people. So I want to just, last thing I want to do is leave you with the words of, I think it was Claire on the national leadership team. I think we were coming back from the bus and she was so serious and she turned around and she said, I want them to know that this is working. The children are hearing the gospel, they're taking it home to their families, and churches are planted and people are saved. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for doing that. Wow.